All right, guys. Um, so we're going to do a video. First off, I want to apologize for my voice. I'm sure it sounds weird and nasally. I've still got this cold going on. And uh, I apologize if you hear like the nasty sound of me blowing my nose or coughing um, out of control while the video is going on. Um, but the topic here is going to be Newton's second law. Finally, we are on to our last of Newton's laws, and it's Newton's second. Okay, now, I realized last time I didn't give you an essential question, so I'm going to go ahead and give you an essential question for this one. So, our essential question, EQ, is going to be, what is Newton's Second law and how does it, it's a weird looking does, well, how does it apply to the real world there we go that's one heck of an essential question right there okay so now that we've got our topic we've got our essential question let's dive into answering that essential question um, so to answer that question we have to ask ourselves another question so we've learned a lot about forces we've learned about balance forces and unbalanced forces and here's a question that I want you guys to think about real quick so think about this what does what does an unbalanced force do? So if we have an unbalanced force, what exactly happens? Let's say that my I've got my coffee cup sitting next to me. Let's say that my coffee cup is sitting here with an unbalanced force acting on it. What's happening to my coffee cup? Um, well, an unbalanced force causes some changes, okay? So, um, let's talk about those changes. So, if it's sitting still, let's not say sitting still, let's say if it's at rest, it will start moving. If it's at rest, it will start moving. Okay, so that's one thing that an unbalanced force could do. So something's sitting there and I give it a little unbalanced force, it could make it start moving. Um, the other thing it could do, um, if it's already moving, sorry guys, the handwriting is a little rough tonight. If it's already moving, then an unbalanced force will make it speed up or slow down. So if we think about a car, right? So if a car is already moving down the highway, um, and you apply an unbalanced force. Let's say that unbalanced force is you step on the gas and it applies a little bit of force to the tires. Well, it'll make your car speed up. Or if you hit the brake, that's an unbalanced force in the other direction and it'll make your car slow down. So those are the kind of the two things that force can do. So here's what we need to get to is, <coughs> sorry about the cough. And this one's big, okay? Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. If you're a highlighter kind of person, highlight that bad boy. Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Hey, it might not even be a bad idea to put that on your cheat sheet card. Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. <coughs> that means it's going to change speed. 
So it could change its speed from zero to a positive speed or negative speed, or it might slow it down or speed it up. So unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Now, <clears throat> Newton's second law helps us figure out stuff about that, that uh, acceleration. So it, it tells us about the direction and the size of the acceleration. So let's first talk about the size of acceleration. Here's what Newton said to figure out the size of acceleration. The force acting on the object is going to be equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration or the change in velocity. So force equals mass times acceleration. Now I told you guys that we were going to have, that's another really important thing. I told you guys that we were gonna have an equation in this unit, and here we do. Force equals mass times acceleration. Now, <coughs> let's think about what that means. Well, that means if I have some constant force, like say 100, okay, and the mass of my uh, of my object, let's say that it is 10, okay? Well then, if I apply a 100 Newton force on a 10 kilogram object, then my acceleration is gonna work out to be 10. <clears throat> now, what we wanna see here is that if I increase the mass, Okay, so if I increase mass, and let's say now that I've got 100 newtons acting on a 20 kilogram object. So here I had, here I had a smaller mass. Now over here I've got a bigger mass. Well, we calculate the acceleration, <clears throat> and I end up with acceleration is now only equal to five. So, that's a small, a bigger mass and smaller acceleration. So, what that means is that bigger mass means lower acceleration. And that makes sense, okay? So, if I apply the same force on a big object, I'm not gonna be able to change its speed as much. But if it's a small object, I can change its speed a lot. So bigger mass is bigger acceler or smaller acceleration, and to go the opposite, smaller mass would be bigger acceleration. So that's what Newton said, and we're going to get a lot of practice with that concept. Now the other thing we want to talk about is the direction of acceleration or force. Yeah, direction of acceleration. That's what I meant. Direction of acceleration. All right, so let me recap. We talked about the size of acceleration. Oh, low battery. It'll be okay. We talked about the size of acceleration. Now we're going to talk about the direction of acceleration. Now for this one, here's the big point. We have to draw a force diagram. Draw a force diagram. Okay, so if we think about a box, okay, and that box has a normal force acting up, and it has a gravitational force, let me fix up my end there, and it has a gravitational force acting down, okay, well, <clears throat> right now, the forces are balanced. So remember, balanced forces... equals no acceleration. Now, what if I took the same box and now I had that same normal force and that same gravitational force, but let's say that I put an unbalanced force, an applied force, going that way. 
And also, let's say that the friction force going the other way was smaller. Okay, so notice that my unbalanced force now is going this direction. I've got more applied than I do uh, in friction. So now we have, whoops, strap my stylus. All right, now I've got unbalanced force. equals acceleration and this time the acceleration is to the left all right so unbalanced force is going to make acceleration to the left now there's three different things that could happen there and it's really important that we consider the different things that could happen <coughs> in this situation um, so first off let's say that the box is at rest. So if the box is at rest, okay, then applying this unbalanced force to the left is going to make the box start moving to the left. Let me zoom. There we go. Box starts moving left. Now, let's consider a second example. Let's say the box was already moving left. Oops. Box is already moving left. Now think about that, okay? We could almost think of it like a motion diagram, okay? So we said the box is already moving left. Well, what happens if I put a little bit of acceleration on that motion diagram? Now, it's going to start moving a little bit faster. Okay, so if the box is already moving left, then that leftward acceleration, we'll do another color now, okay, that leftward acceleration right there means it speeds up. Now let's consider a, uh, okay, draw, whoop. Let's consider one more example, and let's say that now the box is already moving right. All right, <coughs> so the box is already moving right. All right, so let's draw that. So let's say it's moving right. And now I've still got that leftward acceleration. What's that do? That's going to make my line a little shorter my next line a little shorter as well. So now what we've got, okay, is it's slowing down. Now, the cool thing here is we said that there's three things that acceleration could do, right? We went all the way up to here. So we said that acceleration, if it's at rest, it'll start moving and we saw that right down here so the box was at rest and it's gonna start moving alright then we said if it's already moving it'll speed up or slow down and we showed two ways that if the box is already moving if it's moving left it'll speed up if it's moving right it'll slow down alright cool so there's some stuff about Direction of acceleration. So remember, Newton's second law helps us figure out the size of acceleration when there's an unbalanced force and the direction of acceleration.
when there's an unbalanced force. All right, now you guys are gonna try the practice.